What up, cucks? It's the hater, and we're back, motherfuckers. <laughs> I know I keep saying I'm gonna keep coming back full time ish, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen now, as a matter of fact. We're gonna get about two to three videos today, motherfucks. So get excited for this one. Get excited for this one. I went and watched AW Full Gear <laughs> only to make this video. And it was long, motherfucks. Or at least it felt long. I think it's because I watched it on like a Monday. Like I, I decided to like take a break from work. Because I work from home, as you motherfucks might know. And I decided to watch it. But I started watching it at like 1 or 2 p.m. And it went on to like 5. You know, so I'm like, what the hell? Like that's like the full day. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, I watched it. And I'm going to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? All right. I did not watch the pre-show because ain't nobody got time for Serena D versus Allison K. Who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, the NWA Women's World Championship is just being defended regularly on AEW, and I don't understand, like, what's so, what's so great about it, you know? Like, it's like, oh, Thunder Rosa was champion, oh, now it's this broad. Like, it's a fuck, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit at all. <laughs> it's a title that nobody wants. But anyways, the first match, it started off, quote-unquote, hot, right? I say quote-unquote because I'm not really too excited for this match, but certainly I will agree that it was one of the matches that I actually look forward to, um, as opposed to the majority of them, which I didn't. It wasn't my, my, the match I would look forward to the most. We're going to get to that later, motherfucks, and you'll be surprised, I think. So it was Kenny Omega, Kaki Omega, motherfucks, back in the quasi-main event scene versus Hangman Adam Page, a.k.a. the Perpetual Loser. And match went back and forth. I expected a bit more from this, you know? I expected a bit more from this. This was on the same level as, like, Pentagon versus Ray Phoenix on, like, Dynamite regular free TV, right? This match... It's more important than that, right? The implications are obviously greater. Um, the two people in the match are obviously presented as bigger stars than Penta M Zero Junior, whatever the fuck his name is now. That guy has a new name every week. First it's Pentagon, then it's Pentagon Junior, then it's Pentagon Dark, then it's Pentagon Zero Miedo, then it's El Penta M Zero Miedo. Before you know it, it'll be just gone. You know what I'm saying, and he'll be gone as well. So um, this match was all right, but I expected more. You know. Um, there weren't any, uh, there weren't that many false finishes. Um, the match ended when Kenny Omega hit the fucking, what's it called? The, the AA, basically, it's called what it is, right? Um, the one wing angel. Um, the way that it ended was like he had Adam Page up and he like kind of teased that he wasn't going to get it. They teased this like, oh, Adam Page might get out of it or counter it. But then he ended up like just taking it, you know? And that, and you knew it was over because I don't think anyone's ever kicked out of that shit, right? It's going to be good when someone does. Because it's going to come to that at one point, right? Like when he has his match probably with Moxley, it's, it's going to come to that eventually. But um, that wasn't that great. Decent opener, I guess. But the problem is it's not treated as an opener. Like this is one of those like openers that are meant to feel like main event-ish. You know what I mean? Like if you look at a normal pay-per-view from back in the day, the opening match might be like, I don't know, Christian versus like DDP or like William Regal versus Rob Van Dam, right? That's like a that's like a like a real opener, you know? It's like it's like a mid card feud, right? And that's and that's what you're gonna get, you know? But nowadays, there's this new trend that I that started, in my opinion, in WWE, right? Because they have like 15 championships, so periodically you'll see like the show open up with like Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso, right? Which is like an opener, like an opening match, just you know, technically speaking, but it's kind of like a main event, right? It's one of the more important matches of the of the card for sure. So there you have it, right? This match didn't really impress me. Um, it, like, what happened was exactly what I expected to happen. So there you have it. I mean, nothing really special happened. Um, Kenny Omega didn't look especially strong by winning this match. Uh, Adam Page did look weak by losing it because this guy has just been losing for a year, right? It's like, I get it. You've, you've cornered yourself. You've made it so both Hangman Page and Kaki Omega just lost for a year, basically. They had their moment as a tag team, but like, let's be real. That was, you know... Like, no one actually benefited from that. Like, there was like that was a complete waste, if you ask me, right? Like, you could have taken any tag team, right? Kind of like, like they, they took SCU in the beginning and, like, made them champions to kind of get the point across, to, to put the belts over, you know? But they didn't do that. They instead used the belts to put the wrestlers over, and it didn't really work. So who gives a shit about this match? Next up, we had the match that I was looking to forward the most, right? Forward to, I should say, the most. Orange Cassidy, motherfucks, versus John Silver. Now, obviously, I had absolutely no fantasies that John Silver would win this match. But I was looking forward to this match because of John Silver. That's why you might find it shocking, cucks. You know what I'm saying? Because I think John Silver is a great wrestler. That's right, bitches. You heard it here first. John Silver is a great wrestler. And I'll explain why, right? 
people like me, people like other people in the, whatever, IWC, which I don't belong, I'm not part of that shit, but you know what I'm saying, right? A lot of these anti-smarks, even a lot of smarks, um, well, not really a lot of smarts, but definitely the anti-smarks, the, the, the general consensus is that small wrestlers need to be big, right? Now, John Silver cannot be, like, cannot be blamed for the fact that he's like 5'3 or 5'4, right? He can't help that. That's just his DNA, cucks, you know? But what he does do is he goes and gets jacked, right? John Silver is like a dwarf, motherfucks. He's a small but sturdy looking dude. So, like, even though he's smaller, like, he's shorter than Orange Cassidy, obviously he would beat the shit out of Orange Cassidy. He outweighs him by, like, 50 pounds, probably. You know, John Silver looks great, right, for what he is. And, and I appreciate that, right? I'm someone that appreciates hard work. You know, it's one thing to be born and be big like AJ Styles' bodyguard, right? And that's just, you're lucky that you're big in a big man sport or through the big show or Kane or any of these guys, right? But it's very impressive when you're a small guy like him that doesn't rely on doing backflips, right? I mean, he's athletic enough, but I think his finishing move now is like a pump kick, you know? And he has that spin doctor, which is like a, like a lifting move, right? So it's like he has moves that you don't expect from a small guy, but they oddly fit him very well. You know, and JR did the whole JR thing, right? Where he says, this guy's got a bright future ahead of him. And JR is like, when, when JR says that about someone, it's a like guarantee that this person is a jobber, right? But in this case, it actually felt correct. It's felt like John Silver should break out of the Dark Order because he's inherently interesting, right? It's like you have people like Marco Stunt in this garbage company. Then you have people like John Silver, right? Why is Marco Stunt or Jungle Boy the one getting the, the clout, right? Is it because they're small? Because I, I don't understand in what world Jungle Boy can be considered better than John Silver, right? He's not stronger. He's not stronger looking. He's not better. He's not more charismatic. He's not, he's not better in any way, shape, or form. So in my opinion, Someone like John Silver should be pushed, and someone like Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt should be put on AW Dark, where they probably already are. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of the problem that I had with this, but I was looking forward to it, and I was pleasantly surprised by this match. Obviously, Orange Cassidy won, right? Nobody thought that John Silver, like the 15th guy on Dark Order, was going to win. However, Orange Cassidy, like, was taken, quote-unquote, I can't believe I'm saying the sentence, to his limits by John Silver, which is important. Because Orange Cassidy just beat Jericho twice. So this is a big deal in my opinion, right? Uh, Orange Cassidy looked like shit. I mean, he's athletic enough, but he looks like shit. He's just this tiny dude. Like, there's nothing appealing about this guy from a physical standpoint, right? It's like, like, like he feels like an indie wrestler, you know? Well, the first time that anyone goes to an indie wrestling show, you realize how small the people that will never make it are. The problem is now these people are actually making it, you know? I remember, I've mentioned this before, my friend took me to see Ric Flair, right, for my birthday, right, and the guest star, the guest of honor, aside from Ric Flair and, of course, Tolly Blanchard, was, um, what's his face, Damian Sandow, right? Damian Sandow was here. Now, when you watch Raw or SmackDown, you don't look at Damian Sandow and think, wow, what a big guy he is, right? He's, like, about the size of the Miz. But my friend, who is, like, a much more casual wrestling fan than me, just looked at him and was like, wow, he's so much bigger than all of these indie guys, right? And I'm like, no shit, he's a WWE guy, he's a big dude, you know? He's like 6'3", 6'4", he's bigger than this, but he doesn't feel or look much bigger, you know? But he's a big guy, he's like 240, or something like that, like 230 at least, right? Big, strong guy, you know? So it's like, you go to the indies and you see these tiny guys, and you're like, oh, this guy's never gonna make it, just because this just feels amateurish. You know, it feels like this guy isn't trying. That's the problem. Like, a lot of people think it's like, oh, Vince likes guys that are m muscular. No, Vince likes people that try, right? That are trying to improve themselves. That's what people like Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal have gotten these, these pushes. It's not because like, oh, they finally got back into shape. No, it's because he understands and people understand that when, you're, when you make a difference physically, that is often reflective of something that's going on inside you, right? You're like, yo, what I was doing before wasn't working out. I'm going to change this shit. Right? And that shows drive and ambition. And these are honest signals that people cannot fake. Right? You see Orange Cassidy and you're like, you, ha you have to ask yourself, why doesn't this guy go to the gym? Why doesn't he? Like, I don't understand. Like, you want to be a wrestler, why don't you go to the gym? Lift some weights, cuck. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I gotta say about that. John Silver's cool. I like him, motherfucks. I do. You know? Uh, what else we got? We had, uh, oh my god, Darby Allen versus Cucky Rhodes. Now, you know, I have my opinions on this, obviously, right? 
Um, Darby Allen won and he is now the new TNT Championship, which in my opinion means that this championship has absolutely zero prestige and even less value, right? It's not a real title now, right? It, it, it's become the 24-7 championship. You know what I mean? Like they've had three champions within like a few weeks. Um, I mean, Kucky Rhodes beating, uh, beating what's-his-face, Luke Harper, I think was a mistake, right? Because it, it like completely invalidates Luke Harper's destruction of, of Kucky Rhodes. And now he loses to Darby Allen with a roll-up. I mean, it's like, it's just ridiculous, you know? Like if Darby Allen came to me and said, hey, let's fight, I'd be like, why? But then afterwards, I'd be like, all right, I'll beat the shit out of you, mother fuck, you little puny fuck. So that's what I got to say about that. Now, Darby Allen, I give him credit where credit's due. He is different. You know, he stands out in many ways. But some of those ways are not positive. Like, for example, the fact that he wears booty shorts, right, and fishnet stockings. You know what I'm saying? That's just goofy shit, you know? That's not cool. You're not cool, Darby Allen, you little twerp. But anyways, that match was garbage. I didn't enjoy it. I don't like these roll-up finishes and pay-per-view matches. I've never liked that. Like, pay-per-views should have very, very few roll-up finishes and very, very few DQs and screwy shit. They should be definitive points in a feud, right? It's kind of like when Drew McIntyre this week on Raw was like taunting Randy Orton, right? And Randy Orton was like being Randy Orton, you know, he was on the outside, like trying, trying to like cheat. And Drew McIntyre was like, let's give him a preview, right? And I'm like, what do you mean a preview? You've been wrestling each other nonstop for the last like six months. Nobody wants to see this anymore. You know what I'm saying? Oh, let's give him a preview. A preview of what? Of the last four pay-per-views? But anyways, that's what I'm saying, man. People gotta change it up a little bit, motherfucks. So that's what I gotta say about that. Darby Allen, Cody Rhodes, same shit. We've seen it a million times, I don't care. Then we have Shikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose. This match was all right. Um, I mean, for a women's match. And by that, I mean, it was complete garbage. Let's be real. It was shit. The amount of botches that Hikaru Shida committed were inexcusable. I rewinded this match three or four times just to watch some of the botches and then laugh. You know what I'm saying? Not really laugh because it wasn't funny, but, you know, kind of be like, haha, that's fucked up, yeah? And then they had this stupid ass, like, element of the match, which basically suggested that neither one of them was was uh, content in just winning the match. They wanted to hurt the other, right? But it wasn't well done because Nyla Rose hits like a big move. She goes for the pin and pulls up Hikaru Shida by her hair. Then there's another big move and Hikaru Shida kicks out at one. You know, so what the fuck was that all about, right? And she pulled her by her hair, but it didn't do anything. You know? Same thing with Hikaru Shida, right? After the match, Vicky Guerrero comes in all pissed off. This has been a failed, a failed partnership, obviously. You should put Vicky Guerrero with like Sammy Guevara or something. That would be great. Sammy Guevara, right? His name kind of sounds like Guerrero. And have and do the same thing that we're going to do with Eric Escobar. Remember him, motherfucks? Right? Have him, have Sammy Guevara be like her boy toy, you know? Like, that would be interesting. Not her managing Nyla Jax, whatever the fuck, Nyla Rose. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares about that, right? But what was interesting was Vicky slapped her. And this is where you expect Nyla Rose to hit like a power bomb, But she didn't, right? She just took it. You know, which I thought was interesting. It's like, where is this going to go? I mean, it's obviously going to go to an eventual, like, turn on Vicky Guerrero. But nonetheless, it was what it was. Um, that happened, right? Uh, next up, we had the Young Cucks versus uh, FTR. This match was shit. I didn't enjoy this at all, right? None of this match made any sense, right? First of all, we had to sit through JR and Excalibur for the whole entire match talking about how, like, fucking these assholes are the two best tag teams. Watch my last few videos when I mention these motherfuckers to understand why they're not the best tag teams in the world, right? Furthermore, the entire mantra of FTR is no flips, just kicks. The match ends when Dash, whatever, Cash, whatever the fuck, the one with the tattoo on his back and, and, and hair, when that guy does a 450 splash, misses and gets super kicked for the win. The super kick, which is a move that Young Bucks do like 15 times in a match, wins him the match <coughs> and allows him to beat the best tag team in the world, quote unquote, right? Now, I understand. That the storyline here was exactly that. That he had to dig deep and they had to make a mistake, essentially, by uh, breaking their mantra, right? But I didn't think it was good. The fact that he even knows how to do a 450 splash just invalidates their entire character. Which, in my opinion, has already been invalidated by the fact that they come out in suits. What the fuck is this trend when someone wins a title, they come out in suits, right? In NXT, one of the most entertaining things right now in NXT is that stable led by Pat McAfee, right? But all of a sudden, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, who up until this point were presented as these two bruisers, right? They come out in suits. Why are they wearing suits? Because they're champions? What is this like? Like they, 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 win, they win the titles and now they can afford suits? Like they take themselves so seriously after they become champions? I don't like the suit dynamic, motherfucks, but it is what it is. Uh, at some point, I forget at what point, but at some point, 
uh, Team Taz or whatever made an appearance, right? It was uneventful. Um, Ricky Starks is starting to grow on me a little bit, you know? And uh, Brian Cage I used to like. I don't anymore. The last few years has been booked like shit. Losing to like Tessa Blanchard, right? Losing to Tessa Blanchard and now losing to everyone in, in, in uh, AEW. Oh, but he's like 15-1 and one on AEW Dark. Great, he can beat Serpentico. I don't give a fuck about Serpentico. So anyways, that's what I have to say about that. Then we have the Elite Deletion match. Now, I hate cinematic wrestling, but if there's any cinematic wrestling that I will tolerate and that I can't tolerate, it's the cinematic wrestling that involves the innovator of cinematic wrestling, let's be real, Matt Hardy. This actually wasn't that bad, motherfucks. Uh, there was a lot of goofy-ass moments, but a lot of cool cameos. Seeing Gangrel was cool. He looked badass. Seeing Hurricane Helms and Shane Helms in the reporter outfit was also dope. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, the fact that they added these people into the match and they added Private Party and Santana and Ortiz was good because it gave you something to watch while other shit's not, not happening, you know? So I thoroughly enjoyed this for what it was. Uh, Matt Hardy uh, won. He like destroyed Sammy Guevara. I wonder what this is going to turn into storyline-wise. But I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, hopefully this feud is over. Matt Hardy has been handled horribly this entire time. This is obviously the highlight of his AEW tenure. But it is what it is. Next up, we had MJF versus Chris Jericho. This entire match was hacky as shit. And the reason why it was hacky was because the premise was retarded. Right? The premise was if he wins, he goes into the inner circle along with Wardlow. Right? This is a stupid premise and I'll explain why, cucks. Because despite this premise, this wasn't like a friendly contest. Right? There was an animosity, an element of anger and hatred, which, which was kind of squashed after MJF won. But nonetheless, it was there, right? It was hacky as shit because the, the match was overly presented as MJF is going to be a big deal, motherfucks. Deal with it. That was kind of like the story of the match, right? It was like, he's going to beat Jericho and there's nothing you can do about it. And this means that he's good for some reason. I think MJF is shit. What do you think of them apples, motherfucks? I hate MJF. He's like a discount Miz, right? He's like Miz with like one one hundredth of the charisma. I know a lot of people hate Miz. I like the Miz, motherfucks. Suck it, you know? So uh, he's like the Miz. He's a Miz ripoff. People say he's an EC3 ripoff, but I think EC3 is a Miz ripoff too, you know? So it is what it is. But um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like MJF wins the match with a roll up, you know what I'm saying? So uh, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I don't know how he's going to fit into it. I have a feeling it's going to be like when Ken Anderson joined Aces and Eights. It's going to start ruining the inner circle, which honestly needs to be disbanded because they've done nothing for a year. Since, since Jericho lost the title, they've done fuck all. Like Santana Ortiz, which were LAX, which were supposed to be this big time tag team, right? I thought they were going to be tag team champions. These guys are out there jobbing to private party, you know what I mean? It was what it was. Then we had uh, John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston. I don't want to hear that this match was good. This match sucked ass. All right, first of all, I'm sick and tired of John Moxley, number one. Two, Eddie Kingston is fat, all right? He's fucking fat. I don't want to hear anything about that, that either, right? Now, it's all right to be fat. That's cool, motherfucks. The hater has gained a few pounds here and there during his life, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's almost inexcusable to be that kind of sloppy, right, when being a wrestler, especially when you're like an Eddie Kingston type wrestler, which means that you really aren't athletic at all. Right, like Eddie Kingston is not athletic, he's not intimidating, and he's intimidating by the way that he talks and his presence, right? But physically speaking, he's not intimidating. Like if I saw Eddie Kingston, I wouldn't be like, oh, don't beat me up. I'd be like, shut up, fat ass. You know, I don't give a fuck what you have to say. Oh, Boricua, shut the fuck up. I don't give a rat's ass about any of that bullshit, you know? And neither did John Moxley, because he whooped his ass. The match ended exactly how you would expect it to end. Um, what's his face? Eddie Kingston said I quit eventually, right? After he was choked out with barbed wire, it looked the spot looked shitty, right? And furthermore, uh, when Moxie was slammed under the thumbtacks, that's right, fucks, there were thumbtacks involved, there was a spot where he poured alcohol on his back. Right now, I know alcohol on open wounds hurts, but alcohol on, the, on tiny open wounds doesn't hurt that much. And it sure as shit doesn't hurt more than being hit with barbed wire across the face. So there you have it. This match was stupid. It was exactly what you expect, you know? <coughs> Pardon me. I'm yelling and it's making me cough. Now, one good thing that has happened recently in AW, in my opinion, is the imminent return of Pac or Pac or Neville, whatever the fuck they want to call him now. Typically, I wouldn't give a shit about Neville because he's not really that great, right? But he looks fantastic. He looks to be in great shape. And they're giving him 
essentially a COVID gimmick, which I think is brilliant, right? His gimmick seems to be that for the last whatever months, eight, nine months that he's been gone, right? He has been quarantined, motherfuckers. He's been quarantined. So he's been alone and he's losing his mind. He was already kind of fucking insane. And now he's been isolated, right? In lockdown, just basically lifting weights and talking to himself, right? So he's like a crazy guy, right? But he's a crazy guy that where the craziness is explained, right? And it's also culturally relevant, you know? People can relate to that. It's like, dude, I, I haven't been out of my house. Cabin fever, I'm losing my mind. Now, if you're also an asshole, that's the end result of, a, of someone who's an asshole being isolated for nine months. It's probably not good. And that's the character that uh, Neville is going to try to portray. So I hope it goes well. I hope it's nuanced. I hope it, it's different than the bastard, which was just the same thing as his, you know, king of the cruiserweights nonsense, right? So there you go. I'm looking forward to his return uh, for more reasons than one. I hope he, he becomes the number one contender or something because he deserves something, man. Like he was presented as this big deal. And then he's gone, motherfuckers, he's gone. So anyways, that's been your review of uh, AW Full Gear. Uh, in conclusion, it was shit. The only person that deserves a push out of all these jabrones is, uh, what's his face? Fucking uh, John Silver. Is that his name? John Silver? Yeah, I think Silver. I call him Silver. John Silver, right? And speaking of Johns, John Moxley, JR saying at the end of the show that John Moxley is the best wrestler in the world right now is horse shit right you are not the best wrestler if you just beat a guy who's been wrestling for 50 years and this is his first time main eventing anything right this would be the equivalent of i don't know stone cold beating sa rios right and then jr saying stone cold by virtue of beating sa rios is now the best wrestler in the world meanwhile on the undercard the rock is wrestling kurt angle or something you know what i mean get the fuck out of here it's horse shit or even worse imagine if stone if the main event in like <coughs> my bet in 1999 was Stone Cold versus Perry Saturn, right? Perry Saturn versus Stone Cold, and Stone Cold wins. But meanwhile, over on WCW, the main event was Goldberg versus Sting. And then someone's saying, well, he beat Perry Saturn. Stone Cold's the best wrestler in the world. He didn't beat Sting, motherfucks. So that's what I got to say about that, you know? But if he beat like someone like Triple H, it's like, all right, you can make the argument. Triple H versus Stone Cold or uh, Goldberg versus Sting. I mean, which one's better? I don't know. They're, they're all legends. So there you have it, motherfucks. Um, I don't want to hear how John Mox is the best wrestler. I don't want to hear how the, the Young Bucks are now the best tag team. JR also, also mentioned that as well. He was like, I don't know who the best tag team is, but I'm going to go with the guys with the gold. Really? Because up until now, despite the fact that Young Bucks never had the gold, he kept saying Young Bucks are the best tag team, they're the best tag team, they're the best tag team. So fuck off. You know what I'm saying? So like I say about that, motherfucks.